Hey everybody, I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit today about uh, having a management plan for your bees. Um, I think it's something that every beekeeper, whether you're a hobbyist, sideliner, or commercial beekeeper, uh, needs to have. And the reason that you need to have a plan is so that you can be proactive with your bees rather than reactive with your bees. Um, there's a lot of great information out there uh, on the web, YouTube, whatever, uh, with a lot of great advice from a lot of really uh, successful beekeepers. And it is way too, there's way too much out there uh, to ignore and for people to um, not be um, putting this forward on their own YouTube videos. Um, I was watching some YouTube videos uh, from a couple of prominent beekeepers, some with four, five, six times more followers than me, um, where they, you know, get their bees back from wherever, pollination, or it's just a really strong colony coming out of winter, whatever, and um, they're reacting to um, to what the bees are doing rather than having a plan forward as to uh, what the bees are going to be doing ahead. Now, if you have a plan, a management plan, let's say you are a single box management type beekeeper like, say, an Eden Stepler is. Uh, Bob Binney is a, is a, is a two brood box beekeeper, but he is, is slowly trying to transform to a single beekeeper, but it's a little bit more difficult for him given his location he's finding. Um, but they have a plan and it's it's very laid out and detailed by the time of the year and what the bees are doing um, they take steps to eliminate if you ever watch those two those beekeepers those really successful guys um, they follow their plan they don't do swarm videos and they don't do swarm videos because um, they're not reactionary beekeepers they don't just you know, go, oh, my, my hive's gonna swarm, I better go split it out. Um, they plan, they have planned ahead. Now that doesn't mean that their bees don't hit the trees sometimes, because if your bee keep long, this is gonna happen. You're gonna, you're gonna lose some bees to the, it's just inevitable. You're gonna lose bees to the trees. But if you have a plan, you can eliminate a lot of that. I, I was watching some beekeeper, and this guy's ha got, got, got tons of viewers, and he's got a lot of experience, got a lot of hives, and I, w I was watching him three weeks ago when his hive was boiling over with bees. And, you know, uh, first thing they did was slap foundation on top because um, the honey flow is coming. And I'm just scratching my head going, your bees are going to swarm. You, you slapped a box of foundation. That's not space. Bees need space. Uh, foundation is not space. Foundation is work for bees. Uh, comb is space you slap a, a, a on a hive that is that is bubbling over but ha doesn't hasn't hit that that uh, um, that peak where they that drive to want to swarm they'll move straight up into that box within a, a night uh, this this hive right behind me did did just that I threw about that box on there when it was full um, and it filled up that given night uh, peeled off some some resource from it. This hive isn't ready to swarm. Um, I peeled off some resource again uh, on it again uh, two days later. I have a plan for this hive, and they're not they're not preparing to swarm, and that, and that's what I'm talking about. Um, you know that beekeeper that I was talking about. I, you know he slapped the foundation on, and I'm just scratching my head. And I was talking to another friend of mine, and I'm like, that dude, that dude, you know, what what is he thinking? His bees are going to be in the trees, and sure enough, you know, his bees are in the trees. And he's coming back doing an inspection and can't figure out why uh, he's got 22 queen cells uh, all emerged because uh, he hadn't been in his hive in three weeks. I mean, I, honestly, what would you expect? Uh, there was no plan going on. You know, slapping, like I said, uh, boxes of foundation on and expecting them to draw it out to move into it. That is not giving them space, and that is not having a plan for your bees. Um, me, um, 
I'm a single hive management type type guy. I follow a little bit like, not exactly, but a little bit like what, what Ian does. Uh, I build up a full box of bees, and when it gets to the point um, where it it needs to move into some additional room, I have to look at the weather. What's the weather going to do? Um, is putting on a, a second brood box going to stifle growth of that colony, or can they just move right up into it, and can the queen get up there and start laying? Uh, those are some of the things that you have to uh, to look at. Otherwise, if it's that if it's that full and um, and you don't want to put on a second box because it is going to be cold, you can pull off a couple frames of brood, maybe give it to another uh, smaller hive uh, that could use it. And those are some of the options that you have. But if you have a plan going in, like you know, I want all my bees to um, all my colonies to be uh, you know this many frames of brood by this this certain date and anything excess I'm going to do this to it and, and then I'm going to peel it off and give it and split it off and give it you know to, to some other hives or, or give them queens or whatever you have to have a plan and uh, yeah it's been bugging me watching some of these really really uh, popular beekeepers um, even some, uh, commer some commercial guys that um, you know, they just kind of go through the motions of keeping boxes of bees and there's no real management plan for it. I worked for a guy actually that had no management plan whatsoever. They were just boxes of bees. And you know what? Half our bees ended up in the trees and he used to get mad because all the hobby beekeepers used to stick swarm traps around his apiaries and poach all his bees. And he And I'm like, they're, you know, once they leave, they're not your bees anymore. You know, you've basically abandoned them because you, well, suck at managing your, your beehives. Uh, and really, you suck because you've got too many hives or too few people to manage it. And, uh, you know, I, of course, I didn't say that to them. But, you know, that that's kind of the my was my takeaway from it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not the world's most authority on this, but... Like I said, if you there's too much information out there on the net from really good, successful beekeepers uh, that you really need to pay attention to. Um, you know, there's a lot of good personalities out there too, but that does ne not necessarily make them great beekeeping uh, guys. Uh, I tend to watch some some of them just because they're like my friend uh, uh, coined the phrase. It, it's like watching a car wreck. Uh, you just don't know what's going to happen. You can't stop can't stop looking at it um, me I'm still learning every day but I am I've got a I've got a certain plan in place yeah do do the bees dictate uh, what I'm going to do absolutely every day they can do something um, this hive right here you know I, I had planned to, to bring it forward and it ended up going backwards and this queen is uh, has decided that she's no longer viable um, you know she's actually she's actually going backwards and doing spotty brood patterns so this is a hive that I've uh, decided to um, end up requeening in in the future for now I'm just letting the hive go I'm not going to to um, spend a whole lot of time or resources uh, boosting it or anything else uh, she's just gonna get straight out requeen as soon as I get a new queen but those are the type of things and and yeah like that you have to get be reactionary to it uh, but to be proactive and to have a plan for your bees is the most important thing you can do to keep your bees out of the trees. Um, and, and just going back, like I said, you see Bob Binney, you see Ian Stepler, you don't see them do you know, swarm videos. Uh, that's because they follow their management plan. They don't have to do swarm videos because the management plan has taken care of that for them. I, I did a video a while back and I said some of these same things, but uh, um, I just kind of wanted to reiterate that. It's, it's, it's something that bugs me a little bit that I see that because I, I think to myself, these are really good guys and, and, they're, and, and they're spinning their wheels when they could be really a lot more successful uh, if they would just um, have a plan and, and stick to it. Um, me, I'm growing a box of bees putting a second box on, you know, I'm going to end up, you know, bringing, equalizing, uh, 
four frames of brood right before the honey flow, bring the rest of the brood up, queen of concluder, peel off the rest, and then that uh, hive right about, oh, two to three weeks before uh, that four frames will explode into the honey flow right around the summer, uh, the summer solstice, which is June 21st around here. My honey flow lasts about three weeks to sometime around mid-July. Uh, so, you know, like maybe around the 20, you know, 25th of June, 21st to the 25th is the start of the flow. And then all the way, uh, like I said, mid-June, sometimes it goes to the 21st of June uh, for basswood and stuff like that if we get a really good flow going. But uh, that's it, three weeks uh, per flow, but that's how I manage my hives for that. My nucleus hives, I gotta manage it for the same thing. I don't wanna uh, have any more than two to three boxes. I'm peeling resources off them, um, but I don't want them to land in the trees either. So I've gotta plan ahead. I've gotta plan for it, for my queen rearing, uh, how to peel off uh, you know, pressure from the hives, without peeling off too much so that they fall backwards. Don't ever want them to fall backwards. That's that's another thing. Got to watch your flows. Got to watch your pollen, how your pollen's coming in. Uh, your pollen slows down. Brood rearing slows down. Uh, sugar is always important. Sometimes there's a slight dearth there sometime in May. Uh, so you got to watch that and splash some syrup at them a little bit from time to time just to keep them rolling along. But um, having that plan will keep your bees out of the tree and it doesn't matter if you if you do two deeps that's great then that's your plan is to have two deeps but you don't have a box and put a box of foundation or foundation on and then expect uh, your bees to not be in the trees uh, you have to you know say you know when I add room this is what I add four frames of foundation on the outside uh, six frames of, uh, of drawn comb in the middle maybe a frame of honey also in there. Uh, it's one of the drawn combs and you set that on top and let the bees go at it. You don't, you don't plop a whole, whole box of foundation on top of them and expect that that's your, uh, that's your plan for the future. But um, I don't care if you've got one hive, two hives, 10 hives, 20 hives, 50 hives or 100 hives, you, you should have a plan. And it's, it's amazing how many people with, with 100 hives, 200 hives, 300 hives, uh, mostly down south, they don't have no plan for their bees. And you just watch them and you're like, well, you know, you don't realize how much money you're leaving on the table because half your bees are in the trees. You know, once your hive leaves, that's it. You're done for your honey flow. You've just lost both. You've lost. You've lost the swarm with the laying queen. Now your hive is set back 30 days till she starts laying again, and 21 days uh, before that brood starts to emerge. And your field force for bringing in your honey um, is gone. So now you're essentially just in. In and and another thing is, is that. You know, a swarm, swarm colony, a, swarm, a, a colony that swarms has got about a 50% shot at requeening itself. That's it, 50%. So you really want your bees in the trees? Um, you know, yeah, you could cheer that you caught, caught a swarm. That's great. But now you're starting from square one again with like a package late, way late in the game. Uh, not something that you should strive for. I rarely have an issue with swarming in the springtime. My big issue was is swarming post honey flow. Uh, when I drive, you know, six boxes of bees down into a single box. Uh, that's why I like that shook swarm idea. Uh, taking off, peeling off pressure off of the box of bees going into fall. Um, I'm gonna implement a little bit more of that this year. Actually, what I'm going to be end up doing more is splitting the boxes down and putting them all in nucleus colonies and not not rolling in with 10 frame boxes in the springtime just rolling in with nukes i still might have a couple of 10 framers but my bigger plan is is to uh, roll with the five over five nukes but um you know i un understand everybody's got a job and everybody you know you only have so much time but 
if you plan it out as to what you want and you know, what is your what is your flow dates everything about it and yeah the timing will fluctuate a little bit and you got to be you got to adapt to what you know the weather conditions are or what maybe your your queens doing or bees are doing but you still are following that plan it might just be a little earlier it might be a little later or it might not be at all if in fact you have a hive that's not doing anything at all um, So, just wanted to throw that out to you that um, there's a lot of great resource out there on the, um, on the internet from a lot of successful beekeepers and, and my advice to you is to, you know, follow, um, follow their, follow their, um, not a, their exact plan, but follow their advice about having a plan of your own because they don't have your equipment, they don't have your weather they don't have a lot of things that, that you have and you don't have a lot of things that they have so you got to create a plan of your own so that's it that's my advice for today take care happy beekeeping remember all beekeeping is local